Israel must immediately halt its military offensive and any other action in the Rafah governorate which may inflict on the Palestinian group in Gaza conditions of life that could bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. The court observes that the concern that it expressed in its decision communicated to the parties on February 16, 2024, with respect to the developments in Rafah have materialized and that the humanitarian situation is now to be characterized as disastrous. After weeks of intensification of military bombardments of Rafah, where more than a million Palestinians had fled as a result of Israeli evacuation orders, covering more than three quarters of Gaza's entire territory, on May 6, 2024, nearly 100,000 Palestinians were ordered by Israel to evacuate the <coughs> eastern portion of Rafah and relocate to Al Mawasi and Khan Yunis areas ahead of a planned military offensive. The military ground offensive in Rafah, which Israel started on May 7, 2024, is still ongoing and has led to new evacuation orders. As a result, according to United Nations reports, nearly 800 thousand people have been displaced from Rafah as at May 18, 2024. The court considered that the aforementioned developments, <coughs> which are exceptionally grave, in particular the military offensive in Rafah, and the resulting repeated large-scale displacement of already extremely vulnerable Palestinian population in the Gaza Strip, constitute a change in the situation within the meaning of Article 76 of the Rules of Court. The Court is also of the view that provisional measures indicated in its order of March 28, 2024, as well as those reaffirmed therein, do not fully address the consequences arising from the change in the situation previously explained, thus justifying the modification of these measures. However, in order to modify its earlier decision concerning provisional measures, the Court must still satisfy itself that the general conditions let down in Article 41 of the Statute of the Court are met in the current situation. The Court next turns to the conditions for the indication of provisional measures. It recalls that in its orders of January 26, 2024, and March 28, 2024, it concluded that prima facie it had jurisdiction pursuant to Article 9 of the Genocide Convention to entertain the case. The Court sees no reason to revisit that conclusion for the purposes of deciding on the present request. In the order of January 26, 2024, the Court also found that at least some of the rights claimed by South Africa under the Genocide Convention and for which it was seeking protection were plausible, namely the right of the Palestinians in Gaza to be protected from acts of genocide and related prohibited acts mentioned in Article 3, and the right of South Africa to seek Israel's compliance with the latter's obligation under the Convention. The Court saw no reason to revisit this conclusion in its order of March 28, 2024. The Court likewise sees no reason to do so for the purposes of deciding on the present request. It further considers that, by their very nature, at least some of the provisional measures sought pursuant to the present request are aimed at preserving the rights claimed by the applicant that the Court has found to be plausible. The Court must next consider whether the current situation 
entails a risk of irreparable prejudice to the plausible rights claimed by South Africa and whether there is urgency. The Court recalls in this regard that it has previously concluded that in view of the fundamental values sought to be protected by the Genocide Convention, the plausible rights in question in these proceedings are of such a nature that prejudices to them is capable of causing irreparable harm. The Court recalls that on May 7, 2024, Israel began a military offensive in Rafah following weeks of intensified bombardment, and that as a result, approximately 800,000 Palestinians were displaced from Rafah as at May 18, 2024. The Court notes that senior United Nations officials have consistently underscored the immense risks associated with the military offensive in Rafah. For instance, on May 3, 2024, the spokesperson of the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs warned that an assault on Rafah would put, I quote, hundreds of thousands of people at imminent risk of death, end of quote, and would severely impact the humanitarian operation in the entire Gaza Strip, which is run primarily out of Rafah. On May 6, 2024, the United Nations Children's Fund indicated that about half of the approximately 1.2 million Palestinians sheltering in Rafah were children and warned that military operations therein would result in, I quote, the few remaining basic services and infrastructure they need to survive being totally destroyed, end of quote. The United Nations sources indicate that the aforementioned risks have started to materialize and will intensify even further if the operation continues. For instance, on May 8, 2024, the Director General of the World Health Organization stated the Al-Najjar Hospital, one of the last remaining medical facilities in the Rafah Governorate, was no longer functional due to the ongoing hostilities in its vicinity. On May 17, 2024, the World Food Programme warned that it had been able to access its warehouses in Rafah, for over, it hadn't been able to access its warehouses in Rafah for over a week, and observed that, I quote, the incursion into Rafah is a significant setback to recent modest, mod modest progress on access, end of quote. On the basis of information before it, the court is not convinced that the evacuation efforts and related measures that Israel affirms to have undertaken to enhance the security of civilians in the Gaza Strip, and in particular those recently displaced from the Rafah governorate, are sufficient to alleviate the immense risk to which the Palestinian population is exposed as a result of the military offensive in Rafah. The court observes, for instance, that according to a statement by the Commissioner General, of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East, Mr. Philippe Lazzarini, on May 18, 2024, I quote, the areas that peoples are fleeing to now do not have safe water supplies or sanitation facilities. Al-Mawasi, as one example, is a sandy 14 square kilometer agricultural land where people are left out in the open with little to no buildings or roads. It lacks the minimal conditions to provide emergency humanitarian assistance in a safe and dignified manner." End of quote. The court observed that Israel has not provided sufficient information concerning the safety of the population during the evacuation process or the availability 
in Al Mawasi area of the necessary amount of water, sanitation, food, medicine, and shelter for the 800,000 Palestinians that have evacuated thus far. Consequently, the court is of the view that Israel has not sufficiently addressed and dispelled the concerns raised by its military offensive in Rafah. In light of the considerations set out in the preceding sections of the order, and taking account of the provisional measures indicated in its orders of January 26, 2024, and March 28, 2024, the court finds that the current situation arising from Israel's military offensive in Rafah entails a further risk of irreparable prejudice to the plausible rights claimed by South Africa and that there is urgency in the sense that there exists a real and imminent risk that such prejudice will be caused before the court gives its final decision. The court concludes on the basis of the aforementioned considerations that the circumstances of the case require to modify its decision set out in its order of March 28, 2024. The court records that in accordance with Article 75, paragraph 2 of its rules, when a request for the indication of provisional measures has been made, it has the power under its statute to indicate measures that are not in whole or in part other than those requested. In the present case, having considered the terms of the provisional measures requested by South Africa and the circumstances of the case, the court found that the measures to be indicated need not be identical to those requested. The court considers that, in conformity with the obligations under the Genocide Convention, Israel must immediately halt its military offensive and any other action in the Rafah governorate which may inflict on the Palestinian group in Gaza conditions of life that could bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. The court recalls that, it is, that in its order of January 26, 2024, it ordered Israel inter area to, I quote, take effective measures to prevent the destruction and ensure the preservation of evidence related to allegations of acts within the scope of Article 2 and Article 3 of the Genocide Convention, end of quote. In the present circumstances, the court is also of the view that in order to preserve evidence related to allegations of acts falling within the scope of Article 2 and Article 3 of the Genocide Convention, Israel must take effective measures to ensure the unimpeded access to the Gaza Strip of any commission of inquiry, fact-finding mission, or other investigative body mandated by competent organs of the United Nations to investigate allegations of genocide. The court also considers that the catastrophic situation in Gaza confirmed the need for the immediate and effective implementation of the measures indicated in its orders of January 26, 2024 and March 28, 2024 which are applicable throughout the Gaza Strip, including in Rafah. In these circumstances, the court finds it necessary to reaffirm the measures indicated in those orders. In so doing, the court wishes to emphasize that the measure indicated in paragraph 51 2A of its order of March 28, 2024, requiring, I quote, the unhindered provision at scale by all concerned of urgently needed basic services and humanitarian assistance, end of quote, necessitates that the respondent maintain open land crossing points and in particular the Rafah crossing. In view of the specific provisional measures it has decided to indicate, the court considered that Israel must submit a report to the court on all measures taken 
to give effect to this order within one month from the date of this order. The report so provided will then be communicated to South Africa, which shall be given the opportunity to submit to the court its comments thereon. The court recalls that its orders on provisional measures under Article 41 of the statute have binding effect and thus create international legal obligations for any party to whom the provisional measures are addressed. The court underlined that the present order is without prejudice to any findings concerning the respondent's compliance with the orders of January 26, 2024 and March 28, 2024. In its orders of January 26, 2024 and March 28, 2024, the Court expressed its grave concern over the fate of the hostages abducted during the attacks in Israel on October 7, 2023, and held since then by Hamas and other armed group, and called for their immediate and unconditional release. The court finds it deeply troubling that many of these hostages remain in captivity and reiterates its call for their immediate and unconditional release. I shall now read out the operative part of the order. For these reasons, the court, by 13 votes to 2, reaffirms the provisional measures indicated in its orders of 26 January 2024 and March 28, 2024, which should be immediately and effectively implemented. In favor, President Salam, Judges Abraham, Yusuf, Shwe, Bandari, Iwasawa, Nolte, Chargeworth, Brandt, Gomez Robledo, Cleveland, Oresco, Tladi. Against Vice President Subutinde, Judge Adok Barak. Two indicates the following provisional measures. The State of Israel shall, in conformity with its obligation under the Convention on the Preven Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, and in view of the worsening conditions of life faced by civilians in the Rafah Governorate. A, by 13 votes to 2, immediately halt its military offensive and any other action in the Rafah Governorate which may inflict on the Palestinian group in Gaza conditions of life that would bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. In favor. President Salam, Judges Abraham, Yusuf, Shwe, Bandari, Iwazawa, Nolte, Charlesworth, Brandt, Gomez Robledo, Cleveland, Oresco, Tladi. Against Vice President Sebutinde, Judge Adhok Barak. By 13 votes to two, Maintain open the Rafah crossing for unhindered provision at scale of urgently needed basic services and humanitarian assistance. In favor, President Salam, Judges, Abraham, Yusuf, Shwe, Bandari, Iwasawa, Nolte, Charlesworth, Brandt, Gomez Robledo, Cleveland, Uresco, Gladi. Against. Vice President Sibel Tindi, Judge Ad Hoc Barak. C. By 13 votes to 2, take effective measures to ensure the unimpeded access to the Gaza Strip of any Commission of Inquiry, Fact Finding Mission, or other investigative body mandated by competent organs of the United Nations to investigate allegations of genocide. In favor, President Salam, Judges Abraham, Yusuf, Shwe, Bandari, Iwasawa, Nolte, Chargeworth, Brandt, Gomez Robledo, Cleveland, Oresco, Tladi. Against Vice President Sebutinde, 
شاید ادا برات Three, by 13 votes to two, decides that the State of Israel shall submit a report to the court on all measures taken to give effect to this order within one month as from the date of this order. In favor, President Salam, Judges Abraham, Yusuf, Shwe, Bandari, Iwasawa, Nolte, Charlesworth, Brandt, Gomez Robledo, Cleveland, Uresco, Tladi. Against Vice President Sebutinde, Judge Ad hoc Barak. 